really starting to struggle now. I've been up for a while now and I kind of found the van. I can keep hearing noises again, so I'm freaked out. I need to, I need to keep on going, try and find, a, try and find the van. It's, uh, it's, it's turned out to be a nightmare. I started off in the woods and now, now I'm completely lost and I don't know my way anymore. I'm just really struggling. Struggling with all everything. I just need to get back to the van train and find Alison. Yes. Oh god, I don't know what's going on. Oh, right. I finally found the van. Oh, thank god. Oh, thank god for that. Thank god for that. Welcome home, honey. <laughs> to the channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. If it's your first time, stick around because tonight we're talking spooky stories. Alison can't be worse today. She is unable to talk. <laughs> I've got more stories to tell than you. Oh my God! See what happens when you give her a microphone. Yes. Have you seen what, do you what happens? What you think you're doing? Chopping my head off? Are you seeing what happens? Just because I scared you in the van. I'll tell you what, <laughs> it's the perfect instrument. <laughs> hmm. So, hope you enjoyed our little introduction. We've got a few little spooky stories. Every one of them is true. Nothing's been made up. No fabrication. Everything we're telling you tonight is true. Um, we're going to start off with one when we went to Suta Lighthouse many years ago. Now, Suta Lighthouse on the northeast coast um, it was the first lighthouse to have an electric light. If this is anywhere in the world. Um, it has a visitor centre downstairs and um, living quarters that you can visit that were previously from the lighthouse keepers. So we went in there and we were having a good look around and what happened to Alison? Well, I'm a bit of a history buff and um, I like old eras and while Andrew was looking around the sort of engine part of things which is on the ground floor this was when we were still able to move quite freely we didn't really know what was going on with our bodies at this point um, I... I sort of got quickly to the living quarters of the old lighthouse keepers and I was so interested in the old furniture that was in the living room and everything and I couldn't wait to check out what the bedrooms were like and I literally ran up the stairs um, couldn't wait to get in the bedroom and I just hit the barrier at the door I could not get past that door which was open um, I immediately felt so sick I literally felt ill in within a split second I had to run de back down the stairs I, I had a feeling I had to get away from that room I, I literally passed Andrew on the staircase he didn't know what was wrong with us and I ran along the corridor and I had to just sit it was like a little old wooden bench you would have in their schools. I felt so ill all of a sudden at that doorway. Andrew came back down to see what was wrong and I said, I just, it was like I hit a barrier. I could see the room and I, I'm feeling sick now thinking about it. Mm. And I just did not know why. I just felt violently ill. I couldn't take one step into that bedroom. On the way home, we actually googled it and you couldn't really find anything out online about anything really happening in there for it was um, much later on that we were watching a program and they actually said a lighthouse keeper had actually died in that um, building for it wasn't publicized um, yeah that 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 really freaked me out I felt so ill and could not step over that threshold. Yeah, that was, was just weird. 
That was a real strange one. Um, yeah. Obviously, once I found out what Alison had said and you know what our feeling was, I went back upstairs um, and I was able to walk into the bedrooms. Um, obviously, at this point, I was now a little bit terrified. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it was one of the feelings that only Alison got. Um, didn't say anything. It wasn't that kind of spooky thing. It was just a sensation that really knocked Alison sick. Um, yeah. Overwhelmed. Oh, um, I'm feeling it now just thinking about it. So, yeah, that was one of that our spooky stories. Yeah. Um, what else have we got? Because we've oh. got a really long list. We are actually considering in time to possibly write a book on this. <laughs> if somebody well, would like to help us with this. Yeah. yeah. We need a good spell check. Or a movie deal. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> right. Um, I know. Wasn't that? Yeah. Oh. Um, right. Um, Another one that comes to mind, there's so many, um, was when we, we actually moved at one point into a house, it's the next village along from where we live, and uh, the house was built in 1840. Strange thing was, I couldn't really find out much um, information on that house, even though that the information for that village, there was a lot of kings and queens went through that village, very old village, full of history. Couldn't really find anything to do with that house. Um, I was talking to the neighbour and she had a, I think they bought the old schoolhouse or something at one time. And she said there was an actual church in her garden when she chapel. first moved, yeah, a chapel when chapel. she first moved in. Anyways. The first night we move in, everybody knows what moving's like. You chuck everything in, including the kids. You put the beds up, you get a takeaway, and you go to bed, which is what we did. But when we both got in bed, we both I lay down first, then Andrew lay down. No word of a lie, there was a chunk of cold air went. You could measure it, went across me. I sat up. And across Andrew, and he sat up. It was, it Are was... you going to bleep it out if I see it? <laughs> what the f was that? It was one of them things where we both just lay back, and as Alison says, it was just cool air that went it past cool, us. It was cold. Well, cold air. It was but a breeze that went from one wall to the other. As Alison says, you could physically measure. Glasses. How wide this, you know, it was warm on the top and it was warm below, but it was cold across the band and it just went right across both of us. Sorry, kids, I don't know if I've told you this. And before. we both, as I say, sat up and it was like, Jesus, what was that? And it yeah. felt, we both felt it. Um, that, that was the only time we actually felt that whilst we were in that yeah. house. Yeah. Although there was many other things. Although it was, it was a very big presence at the time, whatever that was. Yeah. Just for people who don't know, um, my kids aren't kids now. They're adults. So uh, I'm not telling ghost stories to little kids. Don't let them watch this, by the way. Right, yeah, so that was... <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That was very... So you're probably going to get that all night, by the way. I know, yeah. So, yeah. Sorry for frightening you in the van, by the way. <laughs> I was lost, lost in the woods and then she frightened me. Yeah, it was good. Shopping. Um, right, so another one. A lot actually, well actually, we had weird things happening from one of the other houses actually. With our son, you, could, you can say this yeah, one. Yeah, so our son at the time was obviously quite young. Um, what, eight? Six. Six, seven, eight. Six-ish. Six um and house that we lived in was it's a three bedroom house um we done it up really nice nice big um and we were quite settled in there and then just one night out of the blue i will soon start having um well we said nightmares to start with um so he'd wake up screaming uh, in a panic 
um, I'd run in and you know try and calm him down and stuff, and I'd get him settled again. And anyway, this went on where he started getting these nightmares every night. He would be talking and, and he'd sleep every yeah, night. Yeah, be, yeah, he would be talking where it was like a conversation. Yeah. As though he was physically talking to someone. Yeah. Um, and the conversations he was having, you could hear there were words, but you couldn't quite make it what he was actually saying. Yeah. Um, and as I said, this went on for, um, well, after a full week of this happening, we thought, right, tell you what, we'll completely, when he's at school, we'll completely change his room round and we'll redecorate, thinking that if it feels like somewhere different, he might be able to settle a bit better. Yeah. Sort of thing. So we bought like lots of colourful toys, things like that. Painted all walls, changed all his bedding round, moved yeah. the bed out a yeah. different position and stuff. Thinking that would help. Uh, put some little night lights in, things like that. Anyway, didn't didn't help. Um, it probably made things a little bit worse, if anything. So one particular night. Um, Whoa. You give away. You're scaring me. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Doctor says I've got to tap <laughs> oh. So anyway, there was one night when he woke up and obviously we started calling these nightmares and then it was more night terrors. Not sure what the difference is, but one sounds a bit worse than the other. Um, and there was one particular night where he was screaming and I ran straight in the bedroom and grabbed him and I was trying to gently, yeah. gently try to sort of wake him and bring yeah. him round and stuff, but he would not stop. He was just screaming. He was in a panic and oh yeah, I ended up having to lift him out the bed and I, I carried him downstairs and I was thinking, right, I'll get him in the kitchen. I turned the lights on in the kitchen and sat him on the bench and he was still, he, he, he just wouldn't calm down. Um, I got a wet um, like towel and just tried sort of patting his brow to try and sort of think and if I can try and wake him up slowly was my plan but he just wouldn't settle and he kept like looking over my shoulder and I was thinking all right this isn't I need to get him awake I was thinking is he now at this point where he, his eyes was wide open but I'm thinking is he like a like sleepwalking if you like but yeah. obviously I had all of them so I actually went out the front and stood on the front path so we were in the dark in the cold standing on the front path and he start pointing at the houses around saying that they're on the roofs and they're jumping from roof to roof which at this point really <laughs> start your bugger start 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 your bugger oh, there we go we're there back. you go and you're back we're back um so yeah he was saying that these things was jumping from roof to roof um <laughs> you've, got, right. you've got us on edge so at this point Andrew <laughs> ran back in the house um, and we moved house well we, we did manage to get him calmed down at yeah. that point um, but it was shortly after he continued to have these nightmares um, so we did we moved yeah we decided uh, to move house but it was very strange because when we looked at the deeds it seemed like somebody had been living in that house every year different for the past 20 years yeah so prior to us owning it it was it weird was, it was rented out but it was rented out to hundreds of people by the looks of things weird every person that we, we went to get a conservatory on the guy went oh yeah i used to live there we went to get new doors the, this other guy said oh no where it is i used to live there it was to the point of ridiculous yeah so we, everybody had lived there so we moved out of that house and to try and make a nice break when we actually got the house after that, when we actually had all the boxes packed, ready to move, we then went away on holiday and we had a fortnight in Florida, which was fantastic. We all got to chill out, everything else. And then the day we came back was the day we moved out. <laughs> so we didn't have to stay in that house another it night. Was, yeah. Um, and since then, we've still had spooky things happening, but... Well, let's He'd, move on to the next one. Yeah, he didn't have his nightmares anymore. No, he didn't. So he didn't. That was good. Um. Well. <laughs> 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 uh, 
<laughs> right. <laughs> right. I Sorry. forget what I was going to say now. Right. Um. Let's have a think. <laughs> Sorry. You bugger. Can you, <laughs> can you smell the <laughs> yeah. So the next one. Um. Oh, let's see. God, there's so many. So when we moved in this old house, sorry, old sorry, old one house, second, one second. Some people might be thinking I'm sitting in my dressing gown. This is actually my smoking jacket. You don't smoke. It's my jacket. <laughs> right. So. Dressing gown. <laughs> yeah. Um, another one in that old house. Um. Is this the 200-year-old farmhouse that we were in? Yeah. Right. Um. Oh God, there's so many. Right. Just just give a little concept of this. So this this was a two hundred year old farmhouse. It was when this was built, the rest of this village was actually built around this house almost because access to this house was really poor, <laughs> which was one of the reasons why we ended up leaving there as well. Well, amongst everything else. Yeah, but it was yeah it was right. a nightmare accessible to the physical house. You had to park the car up on like a main road. And then walk down to the house and say it was a bit of a nightmare that way. I'll tell you what, I'm going to... Oh, I've been very undecided to do one story. Actually, I'm going to skip it. Um, right, so another story is in that very house. My daughter was upstairs um, chilling out any ordinary Saturday. Because a lot of people think that spooky things just happen on a night. That's very much untrue that happened all the way through through the day so my daughter was chilling out watching it was a saturday afternoon i think and she was lying on her bed watching the telly at the bottom of the room facing her wardrobe and like any teenager has bags hanging off the wardrobe doors and what have you and she literally now i might have missed something out i can't remember if there was a flash i think there was a flash and then our eyes went to a bags hanging, you know, ten feet away. She just got the she she got the feeling something had, it had happened. Uh, something had passed out. Something had happened. She literally saw a, the handle of a bag lift up and come slamming down onto the door handle of a wardrobe, and it's with such force it snapped. It actually, snapped the leather strap. It did. It snapped the leather strap. Um, and at the same time, um, our son was in the other bedroom and his door handle, it was like old, old farm doors, his door handle was going up and down, up and down, up and down at the same time. Scrap. <laughs> God! <laughs> um, right. Hey, tap them off because I kind of think that... No, I like huh? them. You're not in disguise. I'm, I still like them. Of, it's Halloween. Be, we can't be serious. I can be very serious. You it's Halloween. Serious. Right. Let me start this one. Yes. It was starting to get towards Christmas. Now, like I said, this house that we were in... Um, that the old sash windows. Yeah. It, it was It was 200 year old. It was yeah. farmhouse. It was built before the rest of the village or mainly most of the village. So access to this house was really difficult. Um, and the only person that actually, that nobody had a need to come to our door, other than postmen or visitors, um, and the only other people were, oh, you're scaring us again. Nearly. <laughs> 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 um, so, yeah, we did have one neighbour, um, so obviously she got visitors as well, but that was the only reason people would actually come down that and way. And her security light would come on. Yeah, so yeah. because you actually walked down almost like a dark back lane, as you approached the house, I would never security light would come on and, you know, it sort of lit up the, the way for people to come down. But we were sitting one night and we were just, um, we had a big log fire and a big stone fireplace. Um, we had the log burner on and we were just sitting there chilling out. Christmas tree. Yeah, Christmas tree and everything. And our, our daughter, daughter was yeah. sitting in a chair like very similar to what we're sitting on now, right next to the window. 
the curtains were open on the window, but it was dark outside. And she looked out the window and she went, oh, we've got carol singers coming to the door. I've just seen somebody walk past. She says, but she's like dressed. She's all dressed up for carol singing. She says she's got an old fashioned um, coat on, a bonnet, and she's holding a candle on a plate. That's how she described it. So we thought, all right. Carol singers. And I got up to go to the door. Um, security light wasn't on. Yeah. I opened the door and that's when the security light came on and there was nobody there. Now they couldn't have went any further. Yeah, yeah there was nowhere else to go. They had, to, else to, they had go. to either go to our door or next door. But the time I got up, next door, well, the security light would have been on if next door had came out. Anyway, no so, sign of this person. So that was one thing like that, um, which that was one that was, yeah. could, couldn't explain it. Couldn't describe it. Our daughter clearly saw it and she was adamant what it was. Um, Actually, this leads on to another one when we had friends round. Well, first of all, we had my dad round. Now, oh, yeah. my mum and dad, and I've been explain. I've been telling my dad these, these little stories. And he was like, no, no, there's no such thing as ghosts. That's because Andrew's dad was a pathologist. <laughs> So I'm he sure was. Done that again. He, he was like, you're either alive or you're either dead. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. was his belief. Yeah. So. Anyway. When we were trying <laughs> to explain this to me dad, and we were saying this has happened, he was like, no, there's no such thing as ghosts. No such thing as ghosts. Anyway, we were telling the tale and carrying on with the story and stuff. And he was in complete disbelief, but he started fidgeting. And he started <laughs> fidgeting round like the round his pocket. He was yeah. sit, sitting on the sofa and he started yeah. fidgeting a little bit. And then he was like, "We were carrying on with the story and that." And he was hang like, on, there was no, other... hang on, wait. He was no, <laughs> there's definitely no such thing like that. And he's still yeah. fidgeting. But there was other people sitting next to him on this big settee. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, they were fine. Yeah, my mum was in, and yeah. I think uh, daughter right. was there. Yeah. Um, but anyway, he was he started fidgeting a little bit, and he was adamant, "Not there's nothing in here." And then he literally leapt out of this seat. And he's an old man. Now, if you see me dad, <laughs> he's built like me. <laughs> and we're not built to leap. <laughs> but he leaped, he just leapt out of this chair. And he was like, you've got a mouse, you've got a mouse. No, we didn't have a mouse. No. We did have a couple of dogs. <laughs> not a mouse. Yeah, we did. So he was in a blind panic. And anyway... We we got it out of him that he felt like something was tugging on his trousers. on his trousers round by where his pocket is. <laughs> anyway, we said feel free to check the city and things like that, and he couldn't find anything. And um, well, what actually happened? Yeah, it, it was a couple of weeks later, and we had a couple of friends round. Yeah, and. I used to work from home. I had a little sort of office thing set up in the corner of the uh, the living room and stuff. And yeah, we, we had were, some, we had some friends round. And we were telling them about the tale with the can with the candle. On yeah, the plate and the, the bag, curtain and we were was telling, open. And we, hang on, no, we were telling. And them, I shut it because she says, "Well, can you shut? Can oh, you, can you shut the curtain? Can you yes, shut the curtain?" Right. So anyway, we were telling our friends about the the stories and about me dad jumping. Up you and know stuff. who you are. Yes. Yes. Um, and anyway, I was sitting at the time. I was sitting on the computer chair next to the desk and stuff. Um, and we were explaining the stories and that. And again, the disbeliever. Um, <laughs> he was sitting there. Yes. Nah, nah, don't <laughs> you believe that. You know who you are. <laughs> and I was sitting there. I was at the computer chair, and I had my hands on either arm, resting my arms down on either arm. And as he said something. I had a, a little plastic box full of business cards. Yeah. And this shot off the desk and straight over to him and hit him. Did it? Oh, it hit him. Oh, I didn't know if it hit him. It, I know it come flying off. It certainly landed next to him. Oh, right. So they were definitely it aiming for him. It didn't long. No, no. The... I think they went home after that. But, yeah, that was another another story on that. So that was actually these business cards, the, the plastic box that the cards were in, yeah. came flying off my desk. That I, I had swear down, I had my hands on my chair, and they flew off the desk towards him and actually hear him. They, they did land on his side. 
Right. I'm almost sure they did. But right. regardless of where they landed, they came flying off the desk towards them. Yeah. So. So there was another one I want to say. Um, yeah, my eldest son. Well, I'm on. Just before this one. <laughs> What? Now, we were downstairs. I've lost off this so many. I yeah, should have ticked so them off. There was uh, me, Alice, and our daughter at the time. I think our son was upstairs in his bedroom. But we were downstairs and we were watching the telly. And then, I don't know, Britain's Got Talent or something came on. Oh, it's the uh, Rylan one. Yeah. So. It's me now. We just watched it. Sorry, Rylan. Oh. I'm not a fan. But anyway. I'm just turned it again. You like to beep it out. So, sorry Ryland, I'm not a fan. <laughs> but what actually happened was, obviously this X Factor or whatever it was, Britain's Got Talent came on. And Ryland that came on and I thought, oh, I'm, I'm not watching this. You was watch it, I'm going up to bed, I'll watch something in bed. But I was halfway through a can of Guinness, so I took that with us. Anyway, downstairs, what happened? What, I'll do? No, at this point, didn't we have the... The dried flowers. Yeah, that we had but a that, big that's what I mean. It was going on all day. I had these uh, dried grasses in this tall vase, and all day I kept saying, to "Andrew, the movement is if somebody's walking past the big stone fireplace, um, and catching and them, just brushing past and them. just brushing past them. It was happening all day. I mentioned that when you came yeah. in from work. So anyway, I went up to bed, left these to watch that show, and it was and good. At the side of the bed, I had a bedside table. It was a solid oak uh, cabinet thing. And I put me half can of Guinness on the side there. And just as I lay back in bed, me can moved. It only moved about an inch. Oh. But I, I actually saw it out the corner of my eye. <laughs> what did I do? You frightened us. What happened? Well, what happened? <laughs> 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 anyway Git. so I saw me can of Guinness move about an inch sorry we've got a shadow just behind your head you've, yeah. got, you've got a devil behind you mint <laughs> as long as he doesn't touch me on me I don't, I've got the shadow of a really good looking guy behind me <laughs> I think the word you're looking for is bottled. All right, bottled. Yeah. Right. So anyhow, I'm getting into bed, just uh -huh. lay back, uh -huh. and we can of Guinness just starting to move. You're spoiling the mood here. Okay. So my Guinness just started to move. So I said, uh -huh. in a very calm voice, right, if there's anyone here, move it again. And we can instantly started to slide across the table and I grabbed it before it fell on the floor. Now, all you disbelievers, mm -hmm. I will say now that my can was dry. Underneath the can was dry. Because you wiped it. Yeah, there wasn't any um, like condensation on there where it's maybe it's caused it to slide or anything like that. It slid across and I caught it before it stopped. Now, I thought, right, <laughs> I'm not wasting this. So I quickly drank the Guinness <laughs> and I put the can on the floor. Mm -hmm. So I thought, if I put it on the side, it's going to move again. So I put it on the floor. Anyway, half an hour later, Alison comes up to bed and she said, them reeds downstairs has been moving again. And I says, well, I'll tell you what happened up here. So I explained the story about the can moving and she went, yeah, right. And just as the words left her mouth, <laughs> you know that sound you get when you start to crush a can? Aye. We got that sound. It was just for a split second. Yeah. But it was enough to, to convince put my head her. under the covers. Yeah. Yeah. She was convinced someone had moved that can or something had moved the can. Yeah. Now, I'm going to come back to that with one. But just because we're in the bedroom setting, years ago, I used to quilt. But I didn't use to do it by hand. I was a sewing machinist by trade years ago. And um, 40 years ago. Yeah, yeah 40 makes years you sound ago. really old, well, doesn't it? Mm. And um, so I was, that particular day, 
att det är en sån en liten lappkvilt um, om min sommarskin. Now, what? All right. Are no. you doing that? No. I'm doing it. What the freak? What? Yeah. I, I'm no not mind. doing that. That's the candle, by the way. Just to prove I'm not doing anything, look. <laughs> I think that's your brother having a laugh with us. Let's stop now, it's gone. <laughs> now, come on. He <laughs> always wanted to steal over, didn't he? <laughs> right, I'm just going to carry on, guys. <laughs> Like, I don't on. know what's going on with that candle. Um, right, yeah, so I used to be a sewing machinist and I've been sewing that day. Um, and the only flat, flat place in the house that was big enough for me to sort the patches out on the quilt was the bed. So I'd literally just um, had the sewing machine down on the floor between the bed and the wardrobe. I went to bed. This is a different night from what Andrew's just explained. <laughs> that candle. Um, and went to bed and something woke me up. And it was a sound that woke me up. And it was a sound, you know, when you're half asleep. And it was a sound I recognised, but I couldn't think what the sound was. And it was right next to us and I couldn't think. And then, like, half asleep, half awake. I realised what that sound was because as a sewing machine everybody knows the sound of a click of a needle as the wheel is being turned on a sewing machine and I, I lay there and I open my eyes and I'm listening and sure enough it was the click of the needle going up and down as a sewing machine wheel was getting turned and the sewing machine was right down beside us on the floor and it wasn't plugged in or anything. That was just... God no. So. Yeah. So yes, that was another night. The covers went over me, but me head. There was many more nights actually in that bedroom when I'd heard knocking on the wall or on the um, farmhouse door. Yeah. And I just literally used to say, "No, you can't come in." Um, it was getting like that. Yeah, there was, it was um, another it? night when you got up, you were working and left early in the morning and um, the eldest son was on the, uh, <laughs> on yeah. the four seat to sit there. Yeah, he'd, been, he'd stopped over the, the night before and he was just like, he just decided, because he's a tall, tall Very lad, tall, yeah. he wanted to just sleep on the on the sofa, which was a big, long four seater. Yeah. So he was just laying on there. And anyway... The job that I previously had, I used to get up really early in the morning, so I would leave the house maybe three o'clock in the morning. Um, and I was I sort of went downstairs with every effort to try and keep nice and quiet and nice and thing. Anyway, I went in the living room and I went in, the light was on. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's on. How come you're still awake? <laughs> and he, he had this look of terror on his face. How old was he then? Oh, he'd go back 10 years oh, about Middle 20s? Yeah. So he had this look of terror on his face. And I was like, you all right? So something happened. And he actually said he was lying asleep. And then he just, he, something disturbed him a little bit. And he opened his eyes and he just saw there was a young girl standing right next to him, screaming in his face. All night. <laughs> and he couldn't, when he closed his eyes, he could see this young girl screaming. So he had to keep his eyes open and he was terrified. He says, I've had a little yeah. girl screaming in my face all night. And that was the end of that conversation. He never stayed again. Yeah, I don't think he did stay house. again. He didn't. He, he, so, didn't. he never stayed again in that house. Yeah, and that, so that was really strange. Cannot explain any of that. Um, so, yeah, really weird and really random. Yeah. What else have we got on your list, Pet? Um. I think we, let's have a look. Oh, sorry, I've got, 
I've got lavender oil and zinc oh sandwich bags at right. the bottom of the so list. Just, no. just to give you a little bit of a... No, 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 no. Because <laughs> this is the most terrifying bit. The fact that Alison has actually put the list of all these spooky things that's happened. <laughs> she's put them on her phone and directly underneath that she's got... Shopping list. A shopping list. <laughs> lavender oil, plug-ins, air freshener, washing up liquid, soup... She's got the whole thing, the whole shebang. Now, that's more frightening, the fact that she's done that. I know, that is true. These, um, I really, I'm really... Sorry, it is a bit of a nightmare because we don't need a list because we cannot remember a thing. No, everything they... everything that we're saying today is, is that because things was happening so often and so regular... Yeah. Alison actually made notes of these at the time. Filled a book. And she has literally filled a book of it. Um, and these have gone on for many years, over 20 years now, as of when these things has happened. Um, and it is really weird things. Some things are so random. There's one that you haven't got on the list there, but you'll remember it. Now, I've been, I, I normally wake up really early on the morning and I come downstairs. This particular day, Alison got up first. And she came downstairs. Oh, and, I know what you're going to say. Yeah, and I came down. But well, that was in this house. Yeah, that was in this house. And it was maybe only half an hour later. I'd, I'd sort of walk up and I came down. Yeah. And I walked through the door and I said, Alison, do me a favour, Google this name. Because I'd had, I'd had a dream. And in this dream, a name just came to us. And it's a name that I've never heard of. Nothing to do with me at all, this name. And I says, just Google this name, Owen, because it is so clear, it's so prominent, it's right in my head. I've had a dream last night, and this name just kept coming towards us and stuff like that. And I went, so Google it and see if you can find anything. Anyway, he had a little bit of Google and couldn't really find much, but then one, she wrote the name down and stuff, and then once I'd settled, I had a bit of Google myself. And then what it actually turned out was that the village that we live in is an old mining village that it's on... Um, mine just along the road and this person the name was actually someone that died in one of the um the the pits, pits. when they've collapsed yeah. um there wasn't a great deal of records to be found about it other than it was a family name and the family sort of distant family still live in the village um and he'd married a girl from here as well yeah, I, I can't remember. To be honest, I can't remember all the details. But there wasn't a great deal about. But again, that was just a random thing. But we realized, up, we found out that the pit was actually. Yeah, part of the pit ran under where we lived anyway. But as I said, we couldn't find out much detail about. Yeah, why it. did you come up with that name? Because it, it was just in my head when I woke up. I'd, I'd been strange. I didn't have a dream about this person, but it was just the name was just so clear when I woke up and I knew it wasn't a name that I knew um, but yeah when we checked it out and it's this sort of thing that keeps happening to us all the time it is very random stuff I think we'll end it with this story I'm going to say in it, but this is a very very sad and true story um, I'm going to keep details out of it obviously Um. I had a friend whose husband died suddenly and um, I wanted to go and see her and we uh, we actually lived in the old house at this point and um, we were messaging during the day and all day the back door handle where I live, uh, where we lived, the handle kept rattling all day and I just couldn't understand why because there was a very small walled garden that we had so nobody could have got into the back or anything like that I just very I felt very unsettled all day Um, I'd sent her a message and I said see you soon love and I, I was planning to see her that evening when I went with another friend um, I went to see her to make sure she was alright she said to, did you send me a message? And I said, yes. She says, um, can I have a look at your phone? I said, yes. And I showed her the message. And she said, 
I got that through, Alison. It said, see you soon, love. I went, yes, that's what I sent. She said, but it came to my phone under my husband's name. She actually checked her husband's phone to make sure that there was no message lying there that he'd sent, and he hadn't. That message actually I sent, but it arrived to her on her phone under his name. And that is very true. Yeah. How long before that had she actually lost her husband? It was just very recent, wasn't it? I'm going to say days. Yeah. Days. It was very sad. It happened to a lovely lady. So, yeah. Yeah. So, that is... Um, I was going to give her that light. <laughs> I, I, now, I'm, as I say, we, we have been completely honest with everything that we've said. We haven't fabricated any of these no. stories. No. Everything um, has happened to us exactly how we've said it. Um, now, I, I do know that obviously people say that some people are more susceptible to yeah. maybe he's believing things or whatever. But regardless of that, this has happened to not just me, not just Alison, but our family and yeah. friends Can I just say, around us. When, when it all ha started happening, we didn't tell the kids any of it. Unknown to me, our daughter who was working in a restaurant at the time, um, she was actually going to work and keeping things from us. So the kids were talking together and she was telling her boss things that had been going on to her in the house, not telling us. And we were just keeping it between ourselves, what was happening between us but, in the house. But then one night when we were in that restaurant, our boss had mentioned boss it had to told us. us. <laughs> we were like, oh my God, we're trying to... Keep this from the kids so we're not to scare them. And yeah. she's trying she's to do the experiencing same with us. things and not telling us. It it is so so weird. But it's one of those um it's one of those things that people disbelieve and that is fine, totally fine. And I truly believe you have to experience it to think, hmm, there's something in that. Now, um, I, I'll tell you what, not. I'll tell you what, now, Alison's probably going to kill us at this point, but what, I, what I'm actually going to do at this point, we're going to leave the camera running, I'm not, going to, to I'm not going to stop recording or anything, I'm just going to move it. What I'm going to do is, because we have had this camera, this candle flickering in front of us <laughs> yeah. throughout this thing, I'm and actually you can just see going it's to... it's quite still now, and we're chatting away. I'm going to pick the camera up and just move the camera backwards onto, I think, the poofies there with the books on. I can't say because the lights is off. But I'm going to move the camera across there so there's a wider shot of us. What, are you saying if there's any orbs? I'm going to leave the ca the candle where it is or push the candle slightly away from us <laughs> oh my God, on the other side. It's going again. And we are actually going to ask the question. I'm going to invite... I, I am. Just we have lost people close to yeah, us. Yeah, cut, cut a long story short. Now, this is quite personal to us, but I lost my mother and I lost my brother within a year. Yeah. Um, of each other both were really you know quite fit and then suddenly became poorly with the same thing yeah so <laughs> i'm not mentioning any names or anything like that other than my mother and my brother um but i am going to move the camera across i'm going to keep it recording so you can say you know, this isn't going to be edited or anything the funny thing is can i just say your i always wanted to spend a spooky night in our house right so that'll we're not mentioning out. any names that'll be beeped out yet man right <coughs> so just to start again because Alison <laughs> keeps giving I'm trying to keep people as an I know I know anonymous on here uh, so but Alison keeps mentioning names sorry anyway so I'll, I'll just beep out what she's just said on there but I am going to leave the camera recording we haven't got much percentage left on the battery, so okay. but we have got long enough to try and do this. All right. Fingers crossed, hopefully, anyway. So while it's recording, I'm just going to lift the camera back and I'm going to put it further back so you get a wider shot of where we are. Just so I can explain, we've got two armchairs that we're both sitting in at the minute. The window and the curtains is behind us. We've got, a, we've got a sofa to my left with the dog lying on there. Right, and the other three are upstairs in, in their bed. cage ready for bed. Yeah. So that's all that's on. Oh, right, we've got we've got ten percent of the battery. So I am just going to keep it rolling. I'm just going to. No. Just bear with one second. There we you can still see Alison there. I'm just going to move 
this stuff on there. Right, still. Yeah, I'm just going to tilt that down a little bit so you can see where we are. So you can enjoy the chair. <laughs> right, I don't know if so you're in the shot, Andrew. I'm just going to move this candle. I'm just going to shut my phone off. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> I think you need to be more No, I'm fine. Okay, okay. Right, so. Is that camera moving? No, camera's down. Right, so. You can see, currently see the candle. It, Obviously it is just moving very slightly, but nothing. So if there is anyone, any of my family or any of Alison's family that is around and watching over us, um, or anyone else that would like to make their presence known, um, can you... Flicker the candle. Yeah, flicker the candle. You could give us a little sound but obviously the candle would be better. No. Any sign. Just put your hands over your mouth a bit, Alison, because I, I would like to make sure with it. Now the candle did flicker there. What the proof? So if someone is here wanting to communicate, please can you do something with the candle? and try and communicate through the candle, let us know that you're there. Okay, let's just flick it again. And you make the candle flicker on small for us? Fantastic. If if the person flickering the candle is that my brother? <laughs> is my mother with you? Oh my god. Oh my god. Is any of Alison's family with you? Is Alison's is Alison's dad with you? Is any of Alison's relations with you? He's all having a party. So is my brother still here? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think that's enough said. Wow. Right. I Thank you for that. I knew it was you. <laughs> just a hand over our mouths again. Genuinely. If that genuinely is my brother, my mother, any of my relations, any of Alison's oh. relations, thank you so much. And we'll see you and speak soon. <laughs> I knew it was in. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> that genuinely was happening. There wasn't any kind of tricks or anything going on there. I kept everything recording so you could see everything as it happened. I'm just going to grab you again and pull you closer to us again. And it's a normal candle. Yep. And the candle. It's a normal candle. Well, you saw Andrew blow mine out. Yeah, and you could very clearly see. Um, that makes me feel good. <laughs> I tell you what, that's the very first time we've ever tried that. Yeah. 
and I'm amazed. <laughs> we we always joked. Now before I lost any of my family, like close family like that, we always joked that we'd always have a party when we died, and this party was in heaven. Um, and every time somebody dies, they just go and add to the party. Yeah, so it's going to be one fantastic party up there. Yeah, and so. There's nothing, this doesn't frighten us, this car, no. this is Carmen. Um, and <laughs> I get the beers there. in. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah it, it is, it, it's, it's flickering, but you saw it, it was flickering while I was asking questions. And actually, their picture, because the picture together, your mum and your brother, is actually behind this curtain. Yes. How weird is that? Yeah, that's only So we do have a few photo frames on our window. <laughs> And one of the photographs is my mother and my brother together. Who were the life picture. and soul of parties. Anyway, look, we've got 5% left on yeah. this battery. We are going to wrap this one up tonight. I hope you've enjoyed our little spooky Halloween Woo! spectacular. Woo! <laughs> and look, we've thoroughly enjoyed it. Believe if you want to believe. Don't believe if you don't want to believe. Each here, are some the comment, here are some of the comments if you've got any of these kind of stories. Because we are genuinely interested. Yeah. Um, yeah, let us know. Um, we hope you enjoyed it. So, till the next time, all the good stuff. Like, subscribe, share, comment. Fantastic. Thanks for watching. Bye. I'm that candle spot. <laughs>